Olson Staffing has been around since 1987. Right. And you have to share with me how it all got started. Of all things, I got called by a recruiter. And uh, I was in a job that I really loved. I had no intentions of leaving it. I had turned it down. I actually said, no, 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 I don't want to leave. I don't want to come and interview. I just don't call me. <laughs> I'll call you. <laughs> so my friend who had recommended me for a position, when he heard that I had turned it down, he said, you know, you never turn down somebody inviting you to interview for a job because you just never know what happens. So I said, okay, I'll go and interview. So then the recruiter said, oh yeah, you know, maybe this isn't the job for you, but I have this company, Olsten, who's looking for a, a representative for them. I had always thought about going into my own business someday. So, long story short, here I am. Now, tell us a little bit about why someone might want to use a staffing agency versus trying to do it on their own. The time it takes. Because we're about 75 to 80% small businesses, they don't always have an HR department. The time spent just searching, getting resumes, screening through that, the time that is spent could be certainly shortened by calling somebody like us who we're always doing that kind of work and we can send them candidates. What keeps you excited about coming to work every day? It really is basically helping people so that it would make a difference in their lives. Yeah. If you weren't doing this job and in this field, what would you be doing? Teaching. Helping others you know, be, be more than who they are. There was this gentleman, and during his time with us, he, I guess, screwed up. And he really asked me for a second chance, and I said, okay, we'll give you one more chance. And he went on to start his career with that job. And today, he's, uh, he still keeps in touch with me. He invited me to his wedding. He tries to, let's have lunch, I want to stay in your life, I want you to be in my life. So he's doing really well today, and he said it's because of you that I have the life I have today. What about challenges and changes in the workforce and the needs here? The workforce has changed. In 87, I would say that we didn't have challenges with work ethics as much as we do today. Now you've been very active not only in helping with immediate staffing needs but also helping to cultivate a community of good workers. Yes. What have you been doing? 2006 and 7, I had such a difficult time finding a receptionist or just somebody to simply answer the phones. And I thought, wow, how hard could it be if I could just teach people, show them how to answer phone and they could be off on their way. And you know, a receptionist position or an entry level position always is a very good starting point for a lot of people who have never really worked before, especially because if you do a good job, you get promoted. And then that's why there's a need for a receptionist all the time. So I thought, okay, I could start there, teach people how to answer phones professionally and they could get a career start. But what has happened in recent times is that companies have called me and asked for training. And so I've been doing customer service, which kind of leads to sales, which is kind of all in the same arena. Yeah, so I, I've done that. What would your advice be to a high school student or a college student right now? What do they need to know to get a good job these days? It's the soft skills. It's how to answer a phone professionally, how to treat customers, and not let your emotions get in the way. You go from high school to college and then to the workplace. And there's no curriculum that teaches you how to create your soft skills. In the beginning, I thought, well, it's Department of Education's responsibility. And then I realized that it really, it's like moving a mountain. So what I do is I talk about it, I talk about the school, and I decided I had to be responsible for creating whatever it took to help people become more professional. What are your interests outside of work? I am on the Chamber of Commerce board, and I'm also on their committees as chairs. The first one I was on was I had been appointed on the Workforce and Development Council board for the state. I'm also on the Salvation Army board. This is my last year as chair and I'm also involved with YWCA. I'm on their HR committee. So Why I'm do you think it's board. important to be involved in nonprofits or community service? 
Well, it is a way of giving back to the community who serves us, and um, I feel very strongly about certain things, especially helping women, helping businesses, and helping the poor and the needy, especially with the Salvation Army, and that's who we serve there. I know you're very active in women's issues and supporting women, especially in the workplace. <laughs> Does society hold women back or do women hold themselves back? I think in the beginning, society, but I think now it's women. I'm seeing more confidence in women where they are voicing without feeling, um, I don't know what it is. Is it the Asian culture? It's like they hold back. We're a very passive culture. I think so. I think so. Yeah, but now they're voicing more, and so that's what I try to do in my office, you know, is try to encourage everybody to give feedback, because that's one of the issues that we face all the time, is that we don't give feedback to each other about how we feel, what we think, and how it affects us. So I'm teaching them how to interact without feeling that it's going to hurt somebody. I'm always curious with successful female business owners, um, how you managed family life to have quality in all of the arenas as you were running your business. Well, that's interesting because I started in 87 and my children were about 12, 13, and these were really important years in their lives. They were teenagers and they were going through a lot. Well, so was mom. Anyway, um, in the beginning I chose work, which was really tough. So those are tough years. And that's why I think my children say to me today, no, we'll never ever come and take over the business. So, and then over the years I realized, you know, that I couldn't do that. I couldn't choose work over family. And so I, I changed and I felt that I could make both work. But I always chose my family first whenever it came to important things and put the business on the back burner. Because those moments come and you can't ever bring it back, you know, and those are the things that uh, I think you hold in your heart, you know. Oh my goodness, I gotta cry. So, yeah.